I've started doing a little bit of work on the chassis. One thing I was curious about is the blue caps that are vertically mounted on the circuit boards. So I removed one of them and tested it, and it actually tested good. Then I checked some of the similar looking blue caps on the underside of the chassis, or backside I guess you'd say, and they were also good. However, uh, when I checked some of these Black Beauty or Bumblebee caps, they were definitely leaky, so I've replaced a couple of them here. So now I'm curious, what are these made out of? So I'm going to crack one of them open to know for sure. I also tested some of the electrolytics, and they definitely have leakage, so they're going to be getting replaced. Uh, but right now I'm taking a little break from the recap to test the tubes and I was surprised to see when I took them out that they uh, have little sticky labels on them with the tube uh, number written on them. I'm not quite sure why though because most of them or if not all of them still have the uh, original markings on them that are pretty easy to read so I'm not quite sure. 6BZ6 Right there, clear as day, so I put the label on it. Anyways, I'm going to go through and test them. Sorry, I knew it was a bad damper and that's been replaced. I'm curious about the rest of the tubes. I'm curious why there's a lack of vertical height. Now, it could be because the yoke in this is a little bit different than the one that goes with the set. But it may also be something else. I checked the electrolytic that is across the cathode resistor on the vertical output tube and it tests okay. So I'm thinking maybe we've got a weak vertical output tube so that's what I'm testing right now. And my Hickox 600. It's been warming up for a while. Let's uh, see if we got any shorts. No. No, that tests pretty good. So my next thought is that we've got a lack of boost voltage very commonly in these sets we'll take a boost voltage that's uh, right there and that gets fed up into the vertical circuitry in fact yeah, it goes right up into the vertical output transformer and yoke so definitely if that's low it's going to affect things but we do have full horizontal and a pretty good bright picture, which makes me think that the flyback and associated circuitry is working okay. So it would drop the boost down. Well, if this cap is leaky, that could draw it down. Or if these resistors are at a tolerance, that could certainly affect it. So uh, first of all, I'm going to continue to check all the tubes and replace any that are weak. Right now I'm working in the area around the vertical output tube. This guy is right down here. In particular, there were three caps right above it. Pulled out these two, and they actually tested good, but I went ahead and replaced them anyways. Third one is definitely bad. So I finally found one of these cylindrical vertical types that's bad. Another curious thing, uh, they're all made by different companies. So it's this is Chicago on it, this is Ajax, and this guy is an Aerovox. Also put some new electrolytics down in here. These are also in the vertical circuitry. One's on the boost and one is a cathode bypass. I finished recapping around that vertical output tube and found one more leaky cap. Still got a few more to do, like this guy over here, but I want to do a little power-up test. See where I stand with the changes I've made. So, here we go. You know, I thought about removing these circuit boards to work on them, but it's easy enough to get around both sides of the chassis, so I'm going to leave them all installed. All right. Looks like I took care of my height issue. Well, linearity is terrible, but there's an adjustment for that. Well, the place they put these adjustments for height and linearity is not the most convenient thing. 
They're right next to the horizontal output tube, which not only has a lot of voltage on the plate cap lead, but it also gets quite hot. They do have little slots in the end though, so you can get a screwdriver in there if you've got a flat bladed one that's the right width. Or you can try very carefully to reach. No, nope, I'm not even going to try. Not even going to try. But I can uh, definitely tell when you already is a little screwy. stiff. Well, I'll work on that, but regardless, definitely got full height now. Cool. So I've been hanging on to these capacitors as I've been taking them out of the set because I was curious to see what is exactly is inside of them. Some tested good, some not. So, and uh, they have somewhat different construction. So these are both marked Ajax, but rather different construction. This has a hard blue plastic case. And this is black with kind of a plug in the end. are somewhat different color caps. Alright, so let's see if we can get one of these open. I'm thinking maybe I should get some channel lock pliers and try to crush one. And it's a little bit tougher than I anticipated. Alright, I will be back in a moment. Alright, let's see how the channel locks do. So this type of cap is clearly got a seam around the entire thing, two halves put together, so I'm thinking it'll probably break apart on that seam. Yep. Pretty easy to break. And that is, uh, sure looks like plastic film to me. Yep. That would be a plastic film capacitor, no question. So, let's check out one of these black ones. Boy, it's really brittle. Different side. Got the kind of a yellowish plastic outer substance. Rather brittle. It's kind of looking like plastic film to me as well. Definitely some of these tested leaky. I'm a little bit surprised. I don't know exactly what the lifespan of a plastic film cap is, but they certainly last longer than paper. Assuming you don't exceed their specifications. Boy, it does not want to come off. Leads is on it, that's why. Uh, yeah, this, this is definitely plastic film as well. Oh. Okay, do we have another type here?
That's a little harder to tell. This could be oil impregnated paper. Definitely seems to have oil on it. I know some of you are probably freaking out. I should be wearing gloves or something, but. These types of caps do not have PCBs in them. Those would be for higher voltage caps like motor run caps and whatnot. And I'll wash my hands when I'm done. So I'm not worried. This is comparison. Here is an old cap. Uh, yeah, I'll do this one. Basically, paper and foil rolled up in a cardboard tube, sealed with beeswax. And if you've watched my older videos, you've seen me restuff some of these. Use a higher temperature wax on the end, it makes kind of a plug. So that's just the outer casing. This is the actual cap. And so this looks, looks pretty similar to this, and this is definitely a paper cap. So I'll say paper, it's not going to look like a sheet of, of conventional paper. It's more kind of like wax, thin wax paper. So that's what a paper cap kind of looks like. Supposed to. So, there's the two types. So I think this may very well be oil impregnated paper, and this is definitely plastic film, which would explain why some of these tested good and some did not. Alright, enough messing around with this, and get back to working on the set.